Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell para ma-notify ka sa mga bagong video tutorials ko. Welcome to another episode of Business Math Tutorials for ABM Senior High School Students. This is your teacher, Ma'am Salgado. So, here are the answer to the practice set from the previous video. For problem number one, so the class sold a total of 415 cupcakes. Each cupcake cost 8 pesos. The class donated 70% of the money to the library. How much is the total sale of the class and how much money was donated? So, for our given, we have 415 cupcakes sold. Then, 8 pesos cost of each cupcake and 70% donated to the library. To get the total sales of the class, so multiply 415 total cupcakes sold times 8 pesos for each cupcake, we will have 3,320 pesos. To get the amount donated to the library, so multiply the total sales by 70%. So, 3,320 times 0.17. So, we have 2,324. So, the total sales of the class is 3,320 and donated 2,324 to the library. Problem number 2. Natasha invested 2,000 in a building society account. At the end of the year, she receives 1 over 20 of her investment as an interest. How much interest would she receive at the end of the year? If the interest is increased by 0.1% every year, how much is the total interest after 3 years? So our given is the 2,000 amount of investment and 1 over 20 of investment as interest or 0.05 and 0.1% increase in interest every year to get the amount of interest at the end of the year so multiply 2000 times the interest rate at 0.05 so we'll have 100 pesos for the first year to get the amount of interest after 3 years, so multiply 2,000 times the initial interest of 1 over 20 plus 0 0.001. So, we will have 102 on the second year. Then to get uh, the interest on the third year, so you have 2,000 times 0 0.05 plus 0 0.001 plus 0 0.001 so that would be 104 pesos so to get the total interest after three years so just add all the interest so after three years she will have 306 pesos so congratulations on getting the correct answer so the learning competency for this lesson, so it's compare and differentiate ratio and rate and write proportions illustrating real life situation. The objectives for the lesson, so at the end of the lesson, the learners will be able to differentiate ratio, rate, and proportion. Apply the fundamental property of proportions in solving problems involving proportions. So, for today's lesson, we have ratio, rate, and proportion. So, what is ratio? A ratio is a comparison of two quantities by division. The ratio of A to B can be written in two ways. So we have the odds notation, so it's A is to B. And then we have the fractional notation, so A over B, where B is not equal to 0. 
So the ratio of 10 to 12 may be written as 10 is to 12 for adds notation or 10 over 12 for fractional notation. To simplify a ratio involving rational numbers, we multiply each of the quantities by the LCM of their denominators. So the LCM of 3 and 4 is 12, hence 1 third is to 3 fourth. So we'll have 12 times 1 third is to 12 times 3 fourth. And the answer is 4 is to 9. So for alternative solution, so we can have 1 third is to 3 fourth. So just make it a fraction. 1 third over 3 is to 4. So remember for dividing fraction, so we get the reciprocal of the divisor. So we will have 1 third times 4 over 3. So we will have 4 over 9 or 4 is to 9. What is rate? A rate is a ratio that compares quantities of different units. And a unit rate is a rate that has a denominator of 1, that is, rate for 1 unit of a given quantity. Example, if you drive 120 kilometers in 2 hours, then your rate can be expressed as the ratio of kilometers to hours. So that is 120 kilometers in 2 hours or over 2 hours. So your unit rate is 60 kilometers per hour. So that means that is your average rate. Then what is proportion? So proportion is a statement that two ratios are equal. So if A over B and C over D are two equal ratios, then the statement A over B equals C over D is called a proportion. So each of the four numbers in a proportion is called a term of the proportion. From A over B equals C over D, A is the first term, B is the second term, C is the third term, and D the fourth term. So the first and the fourth terms are called the extremes, and the second and the third terms are called the means. So, there is a fundamental property of proportion. So, it says in any proportion, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. That is, the cross product of the terms are equal. So, in symbol, if A over B equals C over D, then A times D is equal to B times C. So, let's have an example. Do the ratio 7 over 8 equals 14 over 16 form a proportion? Explain. So by following the fundamental property of proportion, equating the cross product of the terms gives 7 times 16 equals 8 times 14. That is 112 equals 112. So therefore, 7 over 8 equals 14 over 16 form a proportion. Example number 2. Do the ratios 8 over 10 and 18 over 22 form a proportion? Explain. So equating the cross product of the terms gives 8 times 22 equals 176 while 10 times 18 equals 180. So since 176 is not equal to 180, so 8 over 10 and 18 over 22 do not form a proportion. Example number 3. Given 7 over 8 equals n over 16, find the value of n. By the fundamental property of proportion, we set cross products equal. So, I have 8n equals 7 times 16. 
that we can solve for n using algebra. So divide both sides by 8. So we will have 8n over 8 equals 7 times 16 over 8. Then we will get the value of n equals 14. Example number 4. Solve for n. So n plus 4 over 5 equals n minus 2 over 3. So the cross products are equated as shown below. So 5 times n minus 2 equals 3 times n plus 4. So we will have 5n minus 10 equals 3n plus 12. So we combine the similar terms. So we have 5n minus 3n equals 12 plus 10. We will have 2n equals 22. So to find the value of n, divide both sides by 2. We'll have n equals 11. Next, example number 5. Solve for x. x over 9 equals 4 over x. So the cross products are equated as shown below. So x times x equals 9 times 4. So we'll have x squared equals 36. So to solve for x, get the square roots of both sides. So we'll have square root of x squared equals square root of 36. So we have the value of x equals 6. Now it's your turn to practice. Okay, that's it for today. I'll give the answer on the next video. Thank you for today. See you in our next lesson. Bye!